Create your own brilliant UIs without software development skills for embedded hardware platforms. CGI Studio is providing a complete and well-established tool chain for UI creation. To give you an idea, over 50 million vehicles in the state-of-the-art and ambitious automotive sector are already equipped with CGI Studio. My name is Reinhard. I'm the CEO from the Candera Group. Hi, I'm Dagmar. I'm the marketing manager of Candera. And uh, how long have you been doing this, uh, this technology? Oh, that's amazing. We are doing this almost 20 years. Uh, so we entered into the mobile phone market where we already had our footprint with uh, HMIs already on, on very low-end devices with 8-bit uh, chipsets. And later on, uh, we, ad we added uh, our stuff into the automotive area. And this started in 2009. So we started with 3D creation and later added 2D. And that's where we are now. We have a tool which is called CGI Studio, which is uh, awesome to create real good uh, embedded HMI applications. And uh, you are doing some uh, launch here for the embedded world, right? Uh, what, what's the news with that? Yes, correct. We are showing our latest developments, which is uh, based on no coding approaches, really easy to transfer from the graphical designer to the hardware itself. So we are showing here our latest developments, which are, which are really, really uh, amazing how you can use it. And uh, really, you can speed up the development. You can save costs. You can save time. It's, it's great. So what we see here is one of our latest HMI solutions uh, we are going to showcase at Embedded World. Uh, this solution has been created with Next System and Data Module, and it's a haptic uh, human machine interface. So all the buttons, all the sliders here have intuitive touch feedback. So we see here an excavator uh, user interface, and here we see an interactive cache point uh, and you see uh, that it has a, a intuitive touch feedback. So also people with visual impairments uh, can interact with this uh, use case thanks to this feedback. Here we have a Nautic uh, CMAP and also integrated sound effects. Uh, here we see a mixing console. Yeah, and all these graphics have been implemented with uh, Candera CGI Studio, also with the smart Photoshop importer. Can you talk a little bit about the story in, uh, in terms of the automotive industry? Uh, you, you've been, uh, you're supplying in 50 million cars, so there's a lot of uh, car manufacturers that are working with your technology. Yes, that's right. So car manufacturers all over the world, but also tier ones all over the world are using our technology. So as I said, we entered... Uh, the beginning was to, to have a, a 3D engine because we have been asked by a German car maker, hey, can you support us on this? And we said, yes, of course. So it was more a garage startage project that we had in 2009. But this is how we rolled it up. So we added this cool 3D stuff and later on 2D and all the peripherals that you need. And this is what was our winning strategy to really achieve this uh, global market footprint. And uh, here in the video, I see that uh, you have this whole use, uh, user interface uh, system and you're talking about code, maybe not necessarily to code. And then you can just import graphics from Photoshop and, um, and yeah. it just, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, we usually had a Photoshop importer, uh, which, which it was not handy to use. And uh, in the past, we added now... Uh, artificial intelligence for this. So it's quite easy. If you have the Photoshop file, you can buy artificial, artificial intelligence. You can, uh, the, the, the Technics is deciding which content do you have there. And it's automatically uh, combining uh, the graphics with the uh, uh, logic in the tooling. And this is some huge step because in the end, you don't need a high professional software engineer to do this. So uh, a, a graphics designer can do it but even you or me can do it. So it should be quite easy. And it is very easy to bridge this gap between how to get the graphics from the artist to the target. And this is, we call it no coding approach. This is a word that we also, or a phrase that we also define for the market, no coding. So if you want to have a really fast, easy prototype, you can do this without any coding. You just... Uh, 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 change some parameters, uh, you, you put your graphics and you combine it with logic blocks that are available and you have a running application. Of course, uh, there is also a way 
of additional coding if you really want to do this because we are we want to uh, not this uh, yeah we want to be open for all all uh, types of engineers and i see that you have all these uh, uh, soc supports ti renaissance right. st right. Uh, right. all these have a, a, a big market in, in these kinds of long term support socs that you know the car needs to or the washing machine needs to be for 10 years right or 20 years yeah yeah the washing machine not so um, maybe not but uh, <laughs> the, the car for sure yeah so of course so this also needs a high quality implementations for these target systems because you have to support this over a long period as you said and this is the the clear expectation in the automotive market but this is also our our quality stamp that we are bringing with CGS Studio. And this is in our DNA to, to deliver high quality and brilliant products. And uh, Dagmar, maybe you want to introduce a little bit what's kind of like your exhibit for the Embedded World Digital? Um, what's the new launch and everything? Um, actually, we try to give an overview uh, about, um, let's say, all the products and uh, from the automotive industry, but also industrial devices. And we have two, let's say, brand new features we're going to show. One, uh, we saw it before in the movie. It's a haptic uh, HMI solution. And we created this with two hardware partners. So this is Next System and Data Module. And uh, maybe you can skip to the movie. Yeah. Uh, and we can have a look at it together. All right. Uh, is it uh, into this? Yes. In the, the clip is. at like three minutes or? Yeah. Yeah, it's at 320. Here. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as you see, uh, this uh, features several different use cases. We have here an excavator a user interface, and all the buttons and sliders here, uh, they have uh, uh, haptic feedback. So, uh, we will see this later on a little bit. It's it's hard actually to uh, show it in a movie, but in a few seconds, you will know what I mean. So, here, when we have a look at it, um, this is a cache point, digital cache point, and this has been created uh, especially to support people with uh, visual impairments. So it uh, gives a, a strong haptic feedback and together with, uh, let's say, the voice support, uh, yeah, those people will be able to yeah, use this cache point without even seeing the, the interface. Is it like a, a, a shell that's kind of uh, uh, glued onto the display or how does that work? It's, and it's just a vibration of the display yes, or? It's, uh, it's a vibration. It uh, is um, a special technology and it gives an intuitive haptic feedback. Yeah, you feel it on, on, on the, yeah, on the, directly on the finger. You can feel it. This is also something that's very useful in automotive, right? When people are driving around, they want to know that they're touching something. Um, is that also for this kind of market? I think haptics is is an uh, absolute trend uh, over all industries. Yes. So I think the HMIs uh, they want to you know not only use the visual impacts but all the senses we have. Yeah. Nice. And you've been going to the embedded world for many years. Yes, for for many years. But this time, the first time, uh, it's a digital event for the first time. So this is new. Uh, but of course, we have a virtual stand there, virtual booth. We're showing different products. We did a great movie shooting before uh, in the company to, you know, uh, do a movie of all the use cases. And we will also have a speaker slot on the 2nd of March, where uh, one of my colleagues will talk about the next generation of HMI development. So uh, this will focus on um, this, what Reinhardt says, so our smart Photoshop importer. So easy import of graphic files and transformation into full functional HMIs with our smart Photoshop importer. And I see uh, there an Infineon logo and some yes, boards. Yes. Uh, there's Actually, a lot of partnership going on there, right? Yes, yes. This is the second, uh, let's say, um, novelty. Um, so we have recently been certified um, from Infineon uh, as, a, as the first HMI uh, tool partner for Traveo 2. So this is uh, yeah, a great pleasure for us. And for this, we had to implement the use cases you see here. So a full digital instrument cluster with a media cover flow in the middle and uh, head up displays. Yeah. So this was, uh, this was the task we had to fulfill and yeah, we did it. 
Nice. And uh, you have colleagues here also on the call that uh, maybe you can show a little bit because you're, you're talking about uh, without coding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means uh, thousands of companies can get into it without having to to learn something very advanced, maybe or very complicated or exactly. uh, and just start. Maybe they can just start to prototype and then get more deeper into it or. Um, yeah, they can start to prototype and uh, normally, you know, it's a it's a when in the HMI creation, it's a two step process. So the designer uh, creates the artwork and then uh, the developer has to create the HMI. And with this tool, you, we can close this gap. So the designer will be able to do the whole process without any support from uh, developers. All right. Uh, so we, we can get in, in, into that very, very shortly. Maybe, uh, Reinhardt, you, you might talk into, a little bit into uh, what kind of partnerships uh, usually uh, might happen out of an embedded world. Is it like the chip makers? The, do you partner? I, I saw logos like Microsoft and all these, uh, like there's all kinds of partnerships that happen in different levels. Yes, of course. So, uh, of course, we have our customers, where we, which we also see as partners. Uh, there are the tier one suppliers, there are the car makers. And of course, uh, we're also working together with the chip manufacturers because it's, it's, it's essential uh, to understand where they are going, what they are bringing to the market. And as uh, Dagmar said, now with Infineon guys, uh, we did. We are doing this now uh, for almost two, two and a half years, and we also have a, a different uh, uh, history also with them because uh, some part of the, of these guys also have been part of our company some years ago, and therefore it really makes sense to to uh, really have these partnerships to understand where is the industry going, and also to be an early follower to to really uh, be able to support the new techniques that is coming in. I think we fulfilled this quite, quite good with the support of the Infineon Traveo 2 at the moment. Can you talk a little bit into uh, uh, the, those years of experience you have with the car automotive industry and how you've been achieving a bunch of stuff for them? Yes, so the, the well, actually we started in 2006 uh, to enter the automotive industry by developing an, an infotainment system, but this was not with our tooling. We used a different tooling. So we, in the end, it was a competitor tooling, at the, not at that time, but now. And we launched uh, together with the tier one. Uh, uh, yeah, for a big US car maker, we, we launched a European series in, in 2007, 2008, 2009. And based on our experience that we gained there and also from the mobile phone area, we talked to other car OEMs and they asked us, hey, it, it seems like you can do something on your own. And then this is, this is how the thing, how the thing started. And of course, we, we are now uh, delivering instrument classes. We are now delivering infotainment systems. We are delivering head-up systems, augmented reality head-up systems, reusable entertainment systems. So this is the, the bunch in the automotive area. But we are also delivering now with our tooling solutions for white goods or for home automation. So it's a, it's a broad spectrum that we are currently covering. Uh, how do you integrate with the with the Android, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or Microsoft solutions and? <laughs> It's yeah, like a for, layer, a skin, or how does yeah, it work? Yeah, it's, it's, we, are, we are integrating into Android like an application. So we are an own application with an own context where we are also supporting all the Android interfaces and where we can uh, connect to the, to the outside world, and, but where we also can use our own rendering technology. Especially for 3D, uh, we have a very strong engine, and this is a real good uh, combination with Android where it comes to have uh, 3D content creation. And this is how we're entering also into this and where we, we are com uh, companying part uh, in, this, uh, in this Android uh, universe. Uh, how do you uh, uh, make sure that things just work? Because when you're in a car and it's like a display, you, it ha really, really like 199.99999% just has to be reliable. Yeah, it, it's all about testing. What can I say? <laughs> so we, we cannot only develop, so we are covering the whole the whole uh, cycle. Uh, and as you can see here, for example, we also have remote testing possibilities. This is just what you can see here. Uh, but of course, uh, in the end, uh, all the developments, the products, they have to run through all the techniques and test mechanisms that we have to fulfill the high quality uh, expectations. And this is clear. And uh, can you talk a little bit about your, your company? You are in Austria, right? And uh, uh, yeah. the, is that the headquarters? Yes. So uh, 
Actually, the company here was established already in, in 2000 and we switched to the automotive area more in 2008, 2009. So here in Austria, we are around 50 people, but we're also working with suppliers in Austria. And uh, recently, two years ago, uh, we uh, changed our ownership. So we are now part of the Artspark Group and uh, the Artspark Group, the headquarter is in Japan. And there is one division, it's called Celsius. They are making uh, or they are market leader for uh for manga toolings and also very, very addicted to graphics and all these things. And parallel, there is also our Candera Japan, where we have another 40 people uh, uh, for product development and also for uh, customer support. And for the other regions, uh, we have a location in US where we're supporting our customers and for special regions like uh, yeah, Korea, uh, China, and also for Japan, we're working with distributors and this over, se over many years. And uh, this is a, a quite good uh, setup for all of us. And uh, so there, there's, there's a lot of... Uh... Uh, things that just work smoothly, I guess, in your solution. Maybe, uh, maybe you can introduce your your colleagues here on the call who yes, can of course. talk to to some of the details about how yes, this works. So we have David here. Uh, David is our product manager. So he he joined us last year, and it's uh, it's quite uh, quite amazing uh, what we already achieved because he was looking on all the product development from a completely different angle and and this was quite uh, quite amazing what we achieved now and we also have patrick on the call and patrick is one of our our yeah software engineers who is also working uh, with the customers with the product and uh yeah good to have them here in this call now so uh maybe uh david and uh, patrick maybe you, you're also going to be screen sharing or showing some of the solution and talking about it Yes, Patrick will show something, a uh, sample, uh, and I can talk more about the product and our strategy. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can go back a little bit here to the to the screen sharing, and uh, maybe you can talk about... Uh, so what do people get? I, I saw on your website, people can get a free trial, for example, yes. and mm -hmm. go from there. That's right. Yeah, uh, we have a free trial, for sure. Uh, our tool is, is mainly focused that uh, you can create easily uh, brilliant HMIs. So this is our goal. Um, in the past, it was mostly that case that you need a strong software development background to create HMIs. This is now changing because you see it everywhere. Everywhere are displays on all devices now. You have more and more features. You have smart devices. You need these features somehow to be accessed by the end user. This means the demand for HMIs is rapidly increasing. This also means that not only the engine, uh, where we are coming from, we have an excellent performance on hardware. We have a broad spectrum of supported hardware devices. Uh, this also means that we need to improve the process of the HMI creation. Um, with that, we focus now on the really on the creator. And this means that you go away from the designer. Uh, uh, sorry, you go away from the software developer to the designer. So the designer should create the HMI without any software development skills. This means, as Reinhard already said, the no coding approach, which is very important. Also, the approach that we try to make the import and creation as simple as possible. Therefore, we created the smart importer. This will then Patrick show. Uh, this is basically an importing tool where you create during the import with an AI. Um, this assisted import process, a fully uh, working HMI solution, just with a few clicks. So from the Photoshop file, which was delivered from the design department, to a fully functional HMI just in a few minutes. And this is a kind of a revolution, you can say so, because this also means that you would do prototyping directly on the target hardware, directly on the screen. You can try out things, which is creating a uh, space for experiments and also creativity for the artists. And as the designer is using our tool, uh, you can also then uh, have a faster process, more uh, uh, agility on developing it. So the process itself is changing to a completely new uh, paradigm of uh, HMI development. Uh, it, it, it's, it is a little bit the holy grail of uh, the, the whole tech industry to have something that's WYSIWYG and where anybody who just has ideas can like maybe mm -hmm. like here in the video showing like some, uh, isn't it? But it's it's hard to make it real, right? Um, uh, how uh, like uh, you you succeeding in making it real that somebody really can do a lot just with no code? 
Yes, this is, I think, the biggest challenge. Um, the challenge to, to, to create a tool which fulfills the demands of the HMI creator. So in the, I said in the past, it was mainly the, 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 the outcome, the end user who was expecting high performance, a good looking HMI and so on. But with the requirement of software engineers uh, and the process, uh, how to create it and the gap between designers and software engineers, uh, the process itself was not uh, optimal. We aim to, 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 to bridge the gap between the designers and the software engineers. And uh, this can be on the one hand achieved via no coding. For sure, not uh, in all cases, uh, designers would do all the things. For example, if you think in the automotive market, a CAN bus needs to be connected. We also aim to make this as easy as possible so that also designers can do these. Um, but it's also important that, uh, that, that our tool still allows the capability to be open open in that case that you can extend it on your needs, also to react on, on new technologies coming up. Reinhard mentioned augmented reality head-up displays, for example. These have for sure other requirements uh, than a static uh, head-up display. So in that case, uh, you need to, 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 to find ways to be so open with the tool to allow integrating new technologies as soon as possible, and also let them access to designers, to people who have no software skills on a high level, uh, to integrate this on a low level detail, really on the controller itself, for example. And uh, when I look at your visit video presentation, there's all these logos that show up mm -hmm. right there with all these uh, 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 SOC providers. Mm -hmm. And I guess they, especially in the recent years, they keep adding more and more performance to these. And are you able to have a no coding approach that takes the whole, at least a, a high percentage of the potential performance uh, and, and still be easy to develop? Yes. Our goal is also to support this on uh, low-end MCUs. Uh, still, the market has not only high-end SOCs with a lot of power, graphical power, and a lot of uh, memory available. You're also talking about the MCUs. And even in that case, you use our tool in a no-coding approach, create your HMI, and then can you can easily test it on the hardware, on the platform itself. And then you can do performance optimizations. Even for performance optimizations, we provide tools so that users can easily optimize the performance, for example, uh, how much space in the memory is required for bitmaps and so on, uh, how to improve uh, transitions and so on. So we provide this tool bundled in our tool chain so that people with no coding uh, oh, people with no coding skills can use it and improve it even on these low end devices and uh, CGI it means uh, computer graphics right uh, it's <laughs> it's like a, what's it called not, a, a lot of 3d really. or um, it's a, a cluster graphical interface if I uh, remember correctly it's not computer generated gra uh, uh, ah, graphics okay. or interface uh, it's becoming or the, the reason for that is because we're coming from the automotive sector, from the cluster itself. So therefore, the name is, uh, it, it's easy to, to mix, but it's a, a historic approach that it's another meaning. But what, what I mean is that there's all these GPUs yes. and all these chipsets and you, you people want to do all, they have all these kinds of ideas. They want to do, they want a, the person to move and all these things. And you, the, I guess maybe you have a timeline and people can animate and they can program what happens Absolutely, and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, we orientate for sure not on, uh, uh, on, on our idea how it could work. If you look, in, for example, in the gaming industries, there are large products available with very strong user base. So how to use that, how to implement things there, uh, it's always a good starting point. Moreover, we have special conditions in the automotive industry where we are following, for example, safety. This is not relevant in the gaming industry, for example, which also is provided with our tool chain. And uh, to do so, so we follow standard approaches, like all tools that we have similar usability patterns on the one hand to make it as easy as possible. And on the other hand, have specific features from automotive or industrial areas like safety, for example. And uh, your colleague here is on the, on the call also, Patrick. Uh, what is uh, Patrick going to show? Patrick will show us the smart importer. This is our importing tool uh, with the AI. So basically, we start with a Photoshop file, and Patrick will show us how to bring this <coughs> Photoshop file, so static images and organized in layers, to life with just a few clicks. And uh, we also have some video in our YouTube channel available where you can see creating from a Photoshop file a motorbike class really go down to the hardware, which is extremely fast done with our tool chain. So he shows the first part until the simulation 
application on the desktop computer uh, because there is currently no hardware uh, uh, available next to him. So, uh, but trust me, it's very easy. We just download the asset. If everything is prepared on the hardware, our engine is there and loading the asset and it's running as well on the hardware itself, just with a few clicks. And you saw it in the video and also Rainer showed it. We have remote simulation capabilities. You don't need even to connect the data bus uh, to the application to really do the first testing on the hardware. So because in living HMI in an early stage, allow you to get more feedback or in, in better impression, use a septing test or something like that to get an early feedback during development, to be able to adopt it to the let's say most brilliant HMI you can design for your hardware, for your target and for your customer. Nice, uh, so maybe uh, Patrick, you, are you going to screen share um, uh, the demonstration or? Yes. So maybe you can uh, you can click on the share screen and add the screen here so we can, we can see. Or maybe you can introduce yourself also, Patrick, uh, what do you do? Uh, hello, I'm Patrick Anderson and I'm a software engineer here at Candera. Uh, so, so let's see uh, your screen. Uh, do, you, do you see how to share it? Right there. Yes. You can share. Uh, maybe you can share a, a application. There. All right. Okay. So this is live right now on your desktop, right? Yes, correct. This is our uh, sync composer, and I will now show how quickly and easy it can be done uh, to uh, create a living HMI uh, just from a Photoshop file. So I will select the Photoshop file I would like to import. So are you using some kind of AI or how, uh, how do you know what, what needs to be imported? How is it just like a standard way? Uh, yes, uh, this is our smart Photoshop importer. And we can see here the uh, preview of the Photoshop file. And if I select an item, uh, this tree structure here again is organized uh, the same way as uh, within the Photoshop file with the layers, for example. And I click here on the airbag telltale. You can see this up here. And now an uh, AI will detect the control that is the most probable uh, to uh, correspond to this uh, to this item here. So in this case, it would be a telltale control. Uh, all I needed to do here is simply click apply and. Uh, I applied the uh, the logic to this uh, now control. So you have some kind of a AI system in there that that knows this stuff, and uh, that can that can guess what needs to be the function for each of the different graphics. Or yes, correct. I will do uh, the same here for. And I'm guessing maybe thousands of different things will be recognized. Or uh, I think so. Uh, right, David. Yes, basically we assist the user that the AI is predicting uh, with a certain probability which control it is. Uh, you as a user at the beginning, you have a, a huge set of different contours, gauges, progress bar, buttons, telltales, radio buttons, and so on. Uh, so the AI is trying to understand or analyzing the content of the selected uh, layers in the Photoshop file, or not only Photoshop file, we support much more than Photoshop. So we can also use, for example, Sketch, Azure RP, or other tools. So we have an open architecture behind that. So the AI is using the visual data coming from the import file, taking that and trying to, to calculate what type of control this is, this is. If you find the control, for example, a gauge control, and you assign it to it, the AI automatically assigns the data behind this control to a fully functional HMI element. So you're not importing bitmaps. For example, if you have a gauge, a gauge background consists of several layers, uh, the gauge needle, for example, um, but it's still static. You don't import it as a fully functional HMI element. The AI analyzes it, calculates with a certain probability what it is, a gauge or let's say a clock or a button, and then it tries to apply the information, the bitmaps to these controls. And on input, you don't get the bitmap, you get a fully functional HMI control. So this AI uh, is, is, I guess, maybe going to constantly be updated with a uh, new knowledge that you might have on what cons uh, your customers want to do? Uh, you 
uh, privacy reasons or connectivity reasons, the AI is running on the desktop computer of the user. Uh, we also thought about an automatically shared AI where all user base from us can use it, but automotive industry is very strict regarding communication outsides and so on. Moreover, you're sending really assets, the bitmaps to the AI for analysis. Uh, this means the privacy is very important because uh, one of these, let's say the assets of the next car, how the user interface looks like of a car which is released, let's say in two years, it's, it's very uh, secret to be honest. So therefore it's not good when you share this picture over the internet with an AI, therefore it's running locally on the computer. This also means that the retraining of the AI uh, is hardly possible. We have a solution in mind where it could be, how it could be implemented so that you can retrain your AI, but there are coming up several uh, AI related problems like overfitting and so on. So uh, how to do that? But we are working and thinking on that, that this can be improved and automatically learning and learn your designs what you are designing and then adopting because we have a user feedback already. So we are showing the top five results in the list. And um, yeah, it's quite powerful. It's assisting the user. And the goal is that the, the import of assets is easy and this assigning also is done automatically with the import. But uh, maybe what I mean is that uh, with, with the software updates, you might improve this uh, yes. in the future, right? That's so right. Yes. You, you might, uh, maybe, maybe they would, there is some way where they can some car, uh, uh, give you feedback if they want. Right. And then yes, exactly. you would know so that, are, ah, this yeah. is more like mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Yes. So if we, for example, introduce new controls, um, I don't know any control, which is not yet available, let's say for an electric car, a battery control, which is showing the charging state. Uh, and this is a specific control because it shows different states, but it's charging or uh, it's, it's going to be empty or running, so, so on. Uh, if we offer some control like that, we for sure will train the AI with the release. Uh, supporting this control. So uh, yes, we will extend this with every release, every update and improve the quality of the AI step by step. Uh, uh, maybe you can show uh, some more uh, demonstration in the, um, right there, where, um, in yes. the app. Yes, uh, I'm going to continue now uh, assigning, for example, this gauge control here. Uh, really easy again, uh, we would here have the possibility to do layer mapping. For example, as David mentioned, the background consists here of multiple layers, as you can see here, and will then be automatically merged to become the, the background of the gauge control. I can even set basic properties here, such as the name, for example, and some other properties. And that's it basically for this gauge control. Uh, one more item that I would like to assign here is this uh, so-called text value that should then later reflect the uh, value of the gauge control, but in this written form. Is is it able to uh, identify the kind of like the font type and, and do all the numbers automatically or do you have to design every number? Yes, this is possible. So the font settings are imported as well so that you're having not a bitmap imported, you have really the font imported on that location or a text. Not a bitmap. And uh, the, so, what you're doing right here is um, uh, showing what would happen for like the automotive industry. But this works for so many different uh, embedded devices. Absolutely, yes, that's right. So not only automotive. So whatever UI you want to create, you start typically in a design tool. Therefore, we not only support Photoshop, also other tools, or even prototyping tools. So you take these samples and can easily import it into our tool to create a first prototype directly on the hardware or with CGI Studio. It would even allow to do rapid prototyping within our tool, because as it is a no-coding tool, you can import the assets from the designer, create here a prototype with different scenes, with some logic, transitions, animations, and so on, and do this directly in our tool, test it on the computer, record a video, for example, send it to the manager for feedback, is this fine, this is how it's working, or really bring it down to the hardware in a really early stage of the HMI development to see how it's behaving on the screen, how it's looking, is the contrast fine, and so on. Uh, and I guess the, the final uh, uh, shipping, shipped uh, uh, product, does it need to be uh, re-optimized by software engineers, or you just ship directly uh, because you want to have very optimized code on the, let's say, washing machine or something like that, right? Yes. Uh, uh, because uh, it needs to be booting fast, uh, running mm -hmm. instantly and reliable and everything. 
Absolutely. So uh, we are coming from the automotive industry with a very large scale or large volume of devices um, created with CGI Studio. Therefore, you invest much more into optimizing every little frame in the hardware. You try to go for the cheapest possible controllers, uh, the lowest possible memory footprint and so on. Uh, it depends on the project. So uh, on the one hand, it's easy to, to integrate the first HMI prototype. For example, you can use for prototyping different hardware platforms, for example, a more powerful one and then start optimizing or go the way directly with the target. So with a, let's say, low end MCU for a white good for washing machine, it doesn't make sense to add a quad core SOC, for example, you would aim for, let's say, very cheap MCU in that case. And and uh, there are anyway some some things to consider how much memory you have. You cannot load fancy uh, HD graphics into a two megabyte flash and show different scenes and different pictures and so on. So you have to consider this from the beginning. But therefore, we also provide tools that the user see how much bitmaps uh, you're already using. You use, let's say, 1.5 megabytes of bitmaps. Uh, you have this kind of transitions. Um, we also show the limitations of certain controllers. So if you select uh, for a controller, which uh, does not support rotating, for example. This is also a rotating of bitmaps. This is also reflected in the tool itself. So then you would be not able to rotate it because the controller cannot do it. And uh, maybe if uh, uh, Dagmar, you, you can talk to a little bit about the, I guess you have training materials and you you, you have videos and people can, uh, how, how, how can uh, your customers learn more and do all this stuff? Um... I think part of it to get a first impression is on our YouTube channel, which I would highly recommend to get a brief introduction of the tool. And uh, uh, part of tutorials are integrated in the tool itself. So uh, CGI Studio comes with, uh, I think, a huge amount of tutorials. There's a, a, a support site that would lead you through the uh, single steps. And yeah, so. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, uh... Uh, introduce, uh, uh, pull you in there again. Maybe uh, what, what do you think is kind of like the? Do you talk about the the, the roadmap, the future? Like your customers, they when they see this, they probably think they probably have lots of like ideas and things like uh, they what they want for the future. And uh, I guess there's a there's a big roadmap and what you might introduce in the future. Yeah, David, would you like to answer? Or should I do it? <laughs> Whatever you want. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> For sure, uh, we know exactly where we want to go. So uh, we, we have here a huge advantage. We not only deliver the product to our customers, we do for our customers even HMI projects. This means that we have in our team people are using our tool, which is a very valuable uh, resource. So uh, when we optimize the tool in the development, uh, we do it also for our coworkers, which is quite good, to be honest. This means that we know exactly where is the pain during the development, uh, what things are not so good, where you can improve things. So this means that we already got a lot of valuable feedback to recent years to improve the product. But uh, there is always space for improvement, and we're looking exactly for that, how to make it faster. We get feedback from our customers as well. We work very closely together with them, so we get also feedback from their side. So uh, we try to understand everything. We try to find out where to make the development faster, easier, uh, the collaboration, the, the team sizes are changing, how to bridge the gap between designers and software engineers. So there are a lot of things where we are looking at. And for sure, what we are focusing right now is a kind of a revolution which is ongoing. As I mentioned, the software developer is not the one who is creating the HMI of the future. It's really the designer. This means that you need a tool which has less software skills required to be used. And also the user onboarding is a very critical phase. So if you look at, at design tools, so the tool should orientate on design tools as we want to really uh, make it easy for designers to start with our uh, CGI studio. So all these things uh, considered is the future roadmap basically. So we want to make it as easy as possible, the onboarding easy and also the workflow to be faster and uh, yeah, with create HMIs as easy as possible. Like in the, in the past, maybe the, the, the software engineer was doing something in one side and the designer was doing something in another side and they had to talk together or something yes. like that. But uh, is there something to, to say about the future being uh, in somehow more design oriented and design like, a, like where design becomes mm -hmm. a bigger role? 
Yes, absolutely. So the design is is a very uh, is the part of the HMI development, the user experience, the user interface. So the designer has a very important part. Before that, the limitations were the designers had always very really good, excellent visions how an HMI could look like or should look like. There were always limitations on the one hand from the hardware, how much memory you have, and so on. Um, but with, with the increasing technology and the rapid uh, the steps in this area, the controllers get cheaper, which means the designers get more possibilities, more memory, more performance to use. This also means that the software engineer who are implementing everything to, to bring out every little part of performance is, is in another role. So the designer will take over more and more parts of the HMI development. Uh, what are we looking at here in the video? Uh, uh, this this system right here. Um, this is uh, for security and uh, implementing yes, it's, automotive. It's, uh, it's a project we did together with Cisco. So uh, we did the uh, GUI implementation, and they gave the uh, hypervisor technology. So this is what we see here. Uh, so there's there's also some uh, some virtualization stuff happening yes. in, in cars. So Yes, so we implemented here, uh, just here you can see also the Android uh, application. So this is a, a app on, on Android running where you can really interact with the car. So it's full 3D. So this is one big strength. But uh, coming back again to the, to the Cisco stuff, uh, we implemented an infotainment system and uh, uh, instrument cluster based on their hypervisor. And we also showed that uh, we, we, of course, can also support these systems quite easily. And, and people, uh, uh, your customers might buy this suitcase? <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. suitcase is more for, for, for demonstration purposes. For demo yeah. <laughs> but it shows really with the embedded hardware, the displays, uh, it, it really shows the interaction. Here you can see the controller with the software in it. And uh, it's a quite nice, uh, quite nice stuff to, to show to the to potential customers. And as you were saying before in the video, you uh, you do all from microcontrollers, so Cortex M to Cortex A, uh, from all these different suppliers. There's there's a lot. There's a big range here, right? Yeah, of course, uh, there is there's a big range, but we also see uh, the demand for this range. So uh, you can see on the high end, uh, uh, if you look more on the on the luxury vehicles, you see the the high end processors. But if you go into the budget cars, they are the microcontrollers. And uh, we are supporting both. I think this is a big strength from us that we can support a wide range with the same tooling approach. So you can use the same approach even if it's a low-cost uh, MCU or a high-end GPU. So it's the, same, it's the same stuff. And there needs to be security in all this, right? And, and some of these new SOCs have more and more secure elements on the SOC. Maybe you, you have considerations in uh, how to make the UI secure. All the way. Yes, uh, we are talking here about ISO 26, uh, uh, 026, and uh, it's uh, it's it's we we covered that in a way that we uh, have a, a parallel render pass in CGS Studio. So from the tooling to the target, you can you can use a secure render pass uh, to fulfill these security requirements, and this is how we have solved it with our tooling. All right, uh, so. So even uh, even with virtual uh, trade show, you can uh, you can show all the latest stuff that you're doing right here and in, in videos on YouTube. Yes. And people, do you have a Facebook also? Yeah, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We have an own YouTube channel, and yeah, there's several ways uh, to to interact with us. Yeah. And I think uh, Embedded World, I would really uh, recommend. Uh, the people meet our uh, virtual booth and also David speak a slot because we will talk exactly about uh, the stuff we talked today. And uh, yeah, it would be quite interesting. Uh, how does it feel to have a, a 50 plus million cars out there in the world <laughs> using your technology? It's great. It's great. When you go into the car, you can point it. That's from our side. It's really good. It's great. All right. But uh, now there's also... Uh, they're even talking about that kind of like talking about trillions of ARM processors uh, eventually to be launched in all kinds of IoT devices and and everybody wants to interact with them and with nice graphics, right? So this this is a big opportunity for you right there, right? It's a huge, mar a huge market outside there. 
And uh, we, we definitely believe it's growing, not only in the automotive industry. There will come up other areas in, in, in industrial uh, applications where this will become much more important in the future. All right. So thanks a lot. And uh, um, looking forward to see uh, millions more devices doing interesting stuff and people able to develop some interesting uh, angles. Is there some other topics uh, we didn't cover that you want to talk about? I think we're good, right? Anything else from, from you guys? All right. Okay. So uh, thanks a lot. That was re really uh, cool uh, to get uh, a deep insight into what you would show at the Embedded World. The Embedded World is really an awesome conference. Um, so people are going to try to show every everything they do virtually. All right. So Thank you for having us. Thanks a lot.